Hi, Doctor. I'm Tan. So our group will be presenting about radiation biology in cancer treatment. And the members in our group are Jasa, Shashmi, Safik, me, and Joshua. So before I get into radiation biology, I would like to talk about cancer. So what is cancer? According to National Cancer Institute, it is a disease that caused by uncontrollable division of abnormal cells that invade and alter the structure of nearby normal tissues and cause them to mutate, like the picture I showed at the left hand side. So here is some quick facts. Do you know that when is cancer first discovered in human history? Would you like to take a guess? Okay, it, it, according to Shudaka, cancer was first found in mummy's bones in ancient Egypt. And the oldest breast cancer case that recorded is by ancient Egyptian in 1500 BC ago. And during that time, the treatment they provide to patients is solely palliative treatment. But with the advancement of technology, the treatment we provide to cancer patients now is actually is mostly radio, radiation therapy. And here are some causes of cancer where it, cancer can be caused by free radical that induced by ionizing radiation that exposed to human. And these free radicals will then activate a series of signal transduction pathways where free radicals will act as the signal and invade normal cells and alter their structures such as the protein in the cells and finally cause them to mutate. Besides that, cancer can also be caused by chromosome segregation errors in mitosis and DNA aberration that are not repaired, such as deletion, insertion, translocation, duplication and interchange. So here are some statistics reported by World Health Organization. In the year 2018, there are about 18.1 million of new cancer cases reported to WHO. And out of this 18.1 million, the co most common cancer uh, recorded in 2018 is actually lung and breast cancer, where the cases re re reported is actually 2.09 million. It was then followed by colorectal, prostate, skin, and stomach. Out of these 18.1 million cases, there are 9.6 cases of death reported in 2018. And the cancer that caused most death is actually lung cancer, where it took away uh, 1.76 million of lives. It was then followed by colorectal, stomach, liver, and breast. So now we are going to talk about radiation biology. So when we talk about radiation biology, we have to go back to 5R and I will be discussed about the reoxygenation in 5R. So first, first of all, what is meant by reoxygenation? So radiobiologically, reoxygenation means that we increase the exposure of tumors to oxygen in order to make them more radiosensitive. And according to culture at all, Hypoxia is considered as the major cause of radio resistance in tumors. So this is the picture shows that the importance of reoxygenation. For example, we had a big tumor and the outer shells of this tumor consists of aerated cells and the center is actually hypoxic cells. Once we irradiate this tumor with radiation, the aerated cells that are more radio sensitive will be killed. And what left leftover is just the hypoxic tumor that is smaller in size. Once the aerated cells are killed, the, hy the hypoxic cells are then in contact with oxygen directly, or in other words, they are allowed to breathe. So again, the outer shell of this hypoxic tumor will then be oxygenated and become aerated cells. And at the center is still the hypoxic cell, but once radiation is exposed onto this tumor, the aerated cells will be killed. 
and leftover is just the smaller hypoxic tumor. And then again, they are allowed to breathe, and hence reoxygenation will occur. And once radiation is up, is irradiated onto the tumor, they will be killed again and left over a smaller tumors, a smaller tumor. And then this step will keep repeating until the whole tumor is destroyed. So basically, this is how reoxygenation works. Okay, according to Kalman et al., they observed that number of hypoxic cells increase as the size of tumor increase. Besides that, they also said that they also observed that patients who suffered from anemia tends to increase the risk of local treatment failure. Uh, this is because uh, for cancer patients that suffer from anemia, it is harder for them to for their body to transport the oxygen to their tumor and hence cause a, a lower reoxygenation rate compared to normal cancer patients. And they then carry out an experiment where they irradiate four different types of mouse tumor with a single dose. And uh, the oxygenation rate is then measured instantly. They found out that all but osteosarcoma's mouse tumor showed immediate reoxygenation. They then make a small conclusion that different types of tumor have different reoxygenation rate. After that, they also carried out a second experiment where they implant some tumor cells in mice. And then once all these tumor reach uh, 150 millimeter cube in volume, they then irradiate this tumor with five gray of radiation over five days. And then the tumors are then uh, divided into two groups, where one is normal air breathing group or the aerobic group, and another one, they clamp the tumor with a clamp to prevent them from breathing. And in that case, they are no, also known as hypoxic tumor group. After that, a single challenge dose is then delivered into both tumor groups and then their diameter of their diameter will measure and the growth delay of tumors is then computed. So from this experiment, they found out that the radiation is less effective for hypoxic tumor cells, or in other words, uh, it is harder to kill the hypoxic tumor by using radiation compared to aerobic group. Secondly, they found out that the cell survival of both tumor groups are actually the same. This is because after the irradiation, what left over in both tumor groups are hypoxic tumor. And hence, since both are both leftover is hypoxic tumor, so they will have a same cell survival rate. So this caused their survival curve to be parallel to each other. But both curve, both survival curve move apart after one hour. This is because uh, for aerobic group, reoxygenation process has started. And they observed that the reoxygenation from of the aerobic tumor group complete after 24 hours. They then made conclusion that different tumor cells have different reoxygenation rate. And after a minimal hypoxic fraction is reached, in this case, this minimal hypoxic fraction is uh, when the tumor is going to before the tumor is irradiated by radiation. And second maximum hypoxic fraction may follow. Here, the second maximum hypoxic fraction means that uh, because the tumor is irradiated by radiation and what left over is just the hypoxic fraction, the, what left over is just the hypoxic cell. That's why the hypoxic fraction is, has reached a second maximum. But this second maximum hypoxic fraction will never return to the pre-irradiated level because now uh, the size of tumor is smaller and also the hypoxic cells is the number of hypoxic cells is also lesser. That's why it will be lower than the pre-irradiated level. So according to minus at all, they use 
a drug called paclitaxel. It is an anti-tumor chemotherapeutic agent that, that will induce tumor destruction through apoptosis by arrest tumor in G2 and M phase of the cell cycle. So they want to see that whether uh, this drug is affected by the reoxygenation rate of tumor or not. So they then dissolve this drug in absolute ethanol and then the solution is further diluted with sterilite solution and injected into the tumor at dose of 40 to 60 mg per kilogram of body weight. And before that, uh, tumors is uh, cultured and when they reach 8 mm in diameter, they then divided these tumors, researchers then divided these tumors into four main groups, where two groups are kept as, kept as control and another two groups were used to carry out this experiment. For the control group, one, one of the group is administrated by paclitaxel alone without exposed to gamma ray, while for the second control group, it only used to expose to gamma ray without administrated with the drugs. As for the other two groups, they were both uh, administrated with the drugs and then were exposed to 15 to 82 gray of gamma ray use and using either aerobic or hypoxic condition. Means that one is under aerobic condition and another one is under hypoxic condition. And the outcome of this research is determined by the growth delay of tumor. So throughout this research, they found out that treating the tumor with drugs and radiotherapy is actually more effective than only using either radiotherapy or treating it with the drugs. And the aerobic group is actually more radio responsive or radio sensitive than the hypoxic group. And the enhancing effect of these drugs shows obvious effect in aerobic cells but shows no significant effect in hypoxic part. So here means that the aerobic cells is actually more sensitive than the hypoxic part. And also these drugs is affected by the oxygen level in tumor. So according to Suzuki et al, they said that it is not entirely confirmed that reoxygenation is important in fraction radiation therapy for human tumors because previously most research uh, carried out is using only mouse tumor. So in this research, they want to investigate the status of oxygen partial pressure <coughs> for cervical cancer before and during radiation therapy. So they then involve 30 cervical cancer patients that receive X-ray radiation therapy in their research. And researchers then treat these patients with ICRT with 30.6 spray for 17 fractions. And then after this regimen is complete, uh, patients were then followed with central shielding irradiation with 20 gray per 10 fraction. And the intratumoral oxygen partial pressure is measured. The, based on the results, they found out that for patients with uh, oxygen partial pressure less than 20 millimeter uh, mercury, which is, consist, which is considered as hypoxic, has higher incidence of local failure rate. While for patients with oxygen partial pressure more than 20 millimeter mercury, has better local control. So they proved that uh, fractionated radiation therapy is actually uh, allowed tumor cells to reoxygenate. But the re since the reoxygenation rate for each patient is different, so here they conclude that hypoxic fraction uh, hypox patients with hypoxic tumor is actually facing a higher local failure rate than patients with uh, aerated tumor. So uh, of this research, uh, we can conclude that 
Oxygen played an important role in destroying tumors. And once aerated tumor cells were destroyed, hypoxic cells can reoxygenate and their radiosensitivity can be increased. Fractionation radiotherapy allows tumor to reoxygenate and increase its radiosensitivity. And also, different types of tumor may have different reoxygenation rate. An interval between every fraction will affect the local control rate of tumors. Yeah, uh, this is because if the interval between every fraction is too short, the tumors will not have enough time to reoxygenate and hence make the treatment less effective. Okay, so this is the reference list that I referred in completing this assignment and that's all from me. Thank you very much. Hi, we move to DNA repair. So in the DNA repair, when the cell is damaged or something happened in your DNA, so the DNA will repair automatically. This is happen every single time, billions of time in your body. So the mechanism where the cell is repaired is after irradiation or the damaging agent. So there are many lesions in DNA that could damage the structure of DNA molecules that are, we will impact the function of a cell ability to transcribe and function normally. And then after that, they will lead to the cell death and root to the mutation and thus a cancer cell. So the possible state that could affect the cell repair rate are irreversible state of dormancy, cell suicide called apoptosis, which is a cell is programmed to be killed by itself after the cell is not functioned properly, and unregulated cell division which is, can cause tumor and cancer cell later in mitosis and meiosis phase. So there are many mechanisms to repair of the cell repair. So the first one is the base excision repair. So the base excision repair is the base must be opposite by adenine pair with the thymine and guanine pair with the cytosine and the U are uh, represent the, the single base mutation will be removed by glycolase and followed by residue of the sugar in the DNA strand itself by, by apurinic endoclease APE. This is a protein. And then they will be replaced by the correct nucleotide DNA polymerase and complete by the DNA ligase, like in the picture on your left. I'm sorry, in your right. The second one, if the mutation base occur more than one, so they need to be repaired, of course. Then the complex of the replication factor, which is overhanging flap structure itself, will be removed by the endonucleus 1 which is FEN1 and the DNA strand are sealed by ligase by the correct base or the correct pair. The second one is a nucleotide excision repair NER. So the NER have a extension step need to be remembered in, in NER. The first one, the damage will be recognized by the protein. And the second one, usually the DNA, usually in this cell repair, the 24 and 32 nucleotide in length will be removed in the DNA incision. And the re, which is the region that containing the adducts. And then the repair synthesis will be filled up with the gap region with the new DNA 
and then DNA DNA ligase by the gap filling synthesis PCNA. The third one is DNA double strand break. So this can be paired by this can be paired by two basic process in the D, DNA double strand break, which is the homologous recombination repair, which is we call HRR, which is require an undamaged DNA strand as a participant in the repair as a template. And then the non-homologous end joining, which is NHEJ, which mediate end to end joining. And the choice is biased by the phase of the cell cycle and, and by the abundance of repetitive DNA. So it occurs primarily in the late HRR or homologous recombination repair occurs primarily in the late of G2 phase of the cell cycle. And then when, when an undamaged sister chromatic is available to act as template, where NHEJ, which is non-homologous end joining occurs in the G1 phase of the cell cycle when there is no such template uh, exists or needed. The fourth one is a mechanism of cell repair of mismatch. So the mismatch repair is uh, to remove this base and small insertion mismatch that occur during replication and remove base-base mismatch in homologous recombination intermediates. MMR can be subdivided into four components. The first one, the mismatch must be identified by sensor that transduce the signal of the mismatch base pair. The second one, MMR or mismatch repair factor are recruited. The third, the newly synthesized strand harboring and the fourth one the mismatch is identified and the incorrect alter nucleotide are uh, excision and the fourth stage are uh, resynthesized and ligation of the excision DNA trace by the complete is uh, you can see on the picture on your right you can see over here there's a mis mismatch mismatch of the damage itself so the protein will be the protein will be do the job by by censoring which is part of the damage occur in the strand itself. So the fifth one is the cross link repair. The this crosslink repair is predominantly signal for a DNA ether strand crosslink. That signal for repair is stalling of the DNA replication fault. The crosslink is removed in the multi-step process. The first one from one strand by the second round of NER. This will result in a strand break of a DNA adduct. DNA synthesis can be processed past the lesion, resulting in the mutation opposite to the lesion. However, the SSB, which is single stranded break, will become double stranded break and seems to require HRL. Reinstitution. Finally, the adduct that remain is removed by NER. So this is the crosslink, which is the crosslink occur induce the replication of the fox stalling. And the B1, the crosslink is removed from the strand by nucleotide excision repair. And the third one is nucleotide excision repair is filled by transition synthesis, resulting in mutation opposite the adapt and the fourth one double strand break DNA this is repair by recombination and mutation 
second around NER to remove crosslink adduct and the last one DNA replicate for the reestablish. So there are if even though the DNA is repair, there must be a same type of the effect of the DNA repair itself. So these are the disease that came from the repair mechanism. The first one is a increase in mutation rate, which is in the base excision repair, and xeroderma pigmentosum in that hypersensitive to UV by the nucleotide excision repair and a Fakoni anemia syndrome by the crosslink repair and the last one is a microsatellite instability by the mismatch repair. Thank you. Welcome everyone. Today we have online presentation for radiobiology and radiation chemistry. My name is Gassan Halim Mahsan. We have radiation, biology, and cancer. In this graph, we have many factors of radiobiology. It's repair and repulsion and redistribution and reoxygenation and intrinsic radio sensitivity. I will explain the distribution, but before I will explain it, now I will explain the, uh, in a briefly the types of the cell division. We have two types of cell division, mitosis and meiosis. In mitosis, the cell will, uh, the cell will divide and uh, will divide. Uh, in many of cases, the calid is cell, cell cycles. We have in G1 pace the cell uh, growth in this space. And in a space, the cell makes copies of its chromosomes. Each chromosome, uh, uh, chromosome now consists of two sister chromatide. And in G2 phase, the cell check the duplicated chromosomes and gets re ready to divide. And in M phase, the cell separates the copied chromosomes to form two full set mitosis and the cell divided into two new cells and the cells that are not dividing will leave the cell cycle and stay in G0 and the cell cycle duration in N phase from uh, 30 minutes to 1 hour and in G1 from 1.5 to 40 hour and in S6 to 9 hour and in G2 from 1 to, four to 5 hour. We can see uh, this graph, a graph pace of the cell cycle and survival curve. This between those in gray and the surviving factor. And you have uh, many of pace S and G1 and G2 and N. In this graph, a space uh, is the DNA cyanide, uh, synthesis and most radiation resistant base and serial repair mechanism are active in this space and uh, increased repair of radiation damage. But in G1, the, uh, this uh, functional part uh, of cell cycle resistant varies with part of base goes down as cell near the G1 to S interface, but in G2, short rest space before N, a quiet radiation sensitive and short time allows to allows little for injury repair and radiation injury uh, in correct in S space may be uh, repaired. And uh, in left of this slide, we can uh, see that N and G2 is more most sensitive from the S, but uh, S space is less less sensitive, but is more than, more uh, than uh, uh, resistant for the radiation. Now I will explain the redistribution. The cell uh, the cell exhibit differential radiation sensitivity while in the different phases of the cell cycle. 
cells in mitosis are more sensitive to DNA damage. Again, and the and seal in late space begin most resistant. With multiple doses cell, Borikris thought a new case of the cell cycle sensitive. As a sensitization due to reassortment causes therapeutic again. An increase in survival duration. The first two hour in split dose experiment resulted from repair of sublethal damage. An interval if interval between doses is six hour, then resistant cells move to sensitive paces. If interval is more than six hour, then cell will repopulate result and increase of a surviving fraction. Hence, those fractionation enable more normal tissue to recover between far, far, uh, fractions, reducing damage to normal tissue. A quality of normal tissue to repair radiation damage better than tumor form phases of fractionation. And we can see this uh, a graph and in left these cell cycles. This for survival of Chinese hamster. Cell posted two, two fractions of cell on, of X-ray and incubate at uh, 37 cells for uh, various time intervals between the two doses. The survivors of first dose uh, in resistance pace of the cell late S. If the interval, interval between those is about six hours, this resistance cell have moved to the uh, G2N pace, which is sensitive. And the summary of uh, redistribution. The redistribution of uh, uh, proliferating cell Populate, population so, uh, throughout the cell cycle in a greater cell, call an fractionated treatment related to uh, single season treatment. Cells are more sensitive to duration M and G2 phase are resistant to du during a space of cell cycles. The uh, redistribution can be benefit in a fractionated course of radiotherapy if cells are coached in sensitive place after each fraction. Thank you very much. Hello, my name is Machazmi. Okay, uh, I want to discuss about uh, radios about radio sensitivity. See, uh, radio sensitivity is a response of the tumor to irradiation that can be measured by extent regression, rapidity of response, and response durability. Actually, a uh, radio sensitivity depends on several factors, which is uh, this factor include the ability of the uh, cell to repair damage, hypoxia, uh, cell cycle position, and uh, growth fraction. Okay, for the radio sensitivity of mammalian cells compared with micro microorganisms, the dominant factor that account for this huge range of radio sensitivity is the DNA content. For mammalian cells are sensitive because they have large DNA content, which represent a large target of radiation damage. For example, this uh for this graph is the dose versus cell refraction. As we can see, for the mammalian cell have a higher sensitivity due to uh, survival fashion shoulder here have a narrower compared to the uh, microorganism shoulders okay uh, for the most resistant is micrococcus which show no significant cell killing event after dose of 1000 gray as we can see here okay for the we are arranged from a to H from the high sensitivity to the lower sensitivity, which is the micro uh, micrococus Okay, uh, firstly, the more sensitivity is the 
Nomen cells followed by E. coli and then uh, E. coli with uh, mutation and then yeast, phage staph, E and F is bacillus megatherium, G is potato virus, and then H is Macrococcus cerebrorum. Okay, let's go to the cell cycle and radio sensitive. Okay, the cell cycle for mammalian cell can divide into four phase, which is a mitosis, M phase, or a G2 phase, followed by G1 phase, early S phase, and late phase. Late S phase. The cell cycle phase, uh, phase can determine cell relative radio sensitive, with the cell being the most radio sensitive in G2 and G1 phase, early phase, and let S phase. As we can see here, the graph uh, swell fraction versus dose in gray for the G G G2 or M phase have higher, higher resistive because of they have a narrower shoulder compared to the uh, compared to the another phase. And then uh, the high, the most shadow resistant is the let S phase here because they have high uh, wider shoulder compared to the other face the the reason for the let s have a higher radio resistance because uh, the homologous recombination with sister converted to repair the damage are occur in a let s phase but for the m phase have a higher radio, radio sensitive because in, in this phase, uh, the dividing cells are actively occur at this phase. Okay, the overall sensitivity of the tissue depend on radar sensitivity in 1906. Uh, according to Bergeron and Tribendo, realized that cells were, were most sensitive to radiation when they are first, rapid dividing, second, un undifferentiated, Third, have a long metatic feature. Okay, for example, uh, for the sensitive cell is lymphocyte cell, germ cells, basal cell of skins and mucosa, and erythro erythroblasts are example of radio sensitivity cell. Okay, for the radio resistant cell, cells that are not susceptible to damage from radiation are radio resistant. The characteristic of radio resistant cells are first low reproductive rate, which is a few mitosis. Uh, second, well differentiated, which is uh, matured, and then the third, a low metabolic rate. Okay, for example, uh, radio resistant cell in our body is uh, nerves and uh, muscle cells. Okay, according to a law of Bergoni and Tribundo, they have a uh, five. Uh, criteria that have uh, inside the radio sensitivity itself. First, radio sensitivity of living tissue varies with maturation and metabolism. Second, uh, stem cells are, ra are radio sensitive. More mature cells are more resistant. Number three, young tissue are more radio sensitive. Number four, tissue with high metabolic activity are highly radio sensitive. Number five, High proliferation and growth rate, uh, high radio sensitivity. Okay, next we go to radio sensitivity uh, among our cells. Okay, we have uh, we uh, we are arranged from the low uh, low sensitivity cells to the high sensitivity cells. Okay, uh, former most radio resistant cell in our body is a uh, muscle cells. Second, brain cell, nerve cell bone cell, connective tissue cells, endothelial cells, epithelial cells, erythrocyte and granulocytes, and the most radio uh, sensitive is the lymphocyte. Okay, what is cause of radio sensitivity? First, they have a high metabolism of the tumor cell was early recognized as prominent factor in radio sensitivity. Radio sensitivity can be judged by a growth of red, rate of growth, increase or unstable vascularity also goes with rapid growth, so that three factors are generally combined to render rapid growth, growing tumor sensitive to radiation. 
Okay, response of tissue determined by the by amount of energy deposit per unit mass. Uh, as we know, it's a dose which is uh, in unit gray. Okay, two identical doses may not produce identical response due to other modifying factor. Okay, we have two different factor, which is a physical factor and biological factor. For physical factor, we have a LET, linear energy transfer, re uh, relative uh, bi biological efficiency, RBE, and fractionation and protection. Okay, for biological, fa biological factor, we have five. Oxygen effect, age, recovery, chemical agent, and hormesis. Okay, let's be, I will discuss uh, for one by one for, for each factor. For the next uh, physical factor, which is uh, we have a uh, LET and LBE. LET stand for linear energy transfer. Linear energy transfer is defined as a measure of the rate at which energy transfer from ionizing to tissue. It will be expressed in unit of KeV of energy transferred per micro of thread length in the soft tissue, which is the unit is the KeV per micrometer. The ability of the radiation to produce biological response increase as the LET radiation increase. The LET diagnostic X-ray, which is approximately about a 3 KeV per micrometer. Okay, for RPE, it stands for the relative biological effectiveness. And for RBE, have higher LT, the higher ability to produce the damage. Uh, for diagnostic X-ray, RBE is equal to 1. Okay, uh, in comparing different type of radiation, X-ray are used as a standard. Uh, RBE of radiation for producing a given radiological effect in given as uh, as a below rbe uh, the, the equation is rbe equal to dose of standard radiation to produce a given effect which is the standard radiation uh, is equivalent to the 250 kev for a, for x-ray divided by dose of test radiation to produce a given effect okay uh, as we can see here the graph the let at which RBE reach a peak is much as uh, much the same, about 100 keV per micrometer here, for a wide range of mammalian cells. As the LET increase, the RBE is increased slowly at the first, and then uh, more rapidly as the LET increase beyond the uh, 100 keV per micrometer. As you can, as you can see here, one ten until. 100 they increase rapidly and then at certain point at the at, at beyond the 100 kev per micrometer the region of overkill event will occur okay let's go to the next physical factor which is a fractionation and protection okay for fractionation uh, divide a dose into the series of dose. For example, if the 12 gray dose delivered at the same dose rate, which is 4 gray per minute, but in 12, 12 uh, equal fraction of 1 gray is spread by 24 hours, the red will survive. This dose, the dose is uh, said to be fractionation. Dose fractionation cause less effect due to intracellular repair and recovery between dose. Actually, for the fractionation, is uh, routinely used in on oncology. Okay, for protection, uh, reduce a dose rate. For example, uh, total of a uh, twelve gray is delivered in three minute, three minute, which is a four gray per minute. A little of red is a little for red. However, when a twelve gray is delivered at the rate of one gray per hour, for a total of twelve hours, the red also will survive. If the dose deliver continuously, but at a lower dose rate, it is said to be protracted. Okay, for biological factor affecting radio sensitivity, we have four, which is the oxygen effect, age, recovery, and chemical agent. Okay, let's go to one by one. Okay, the uh, biological factor number one is the oxygen effect. Oxygen effect, uh, we know is a OER, which is a oxygen enhancement ratio. 
For ER is the ratio of the un those under hypoxic to elevated condition that produce the same biological effect. The presence of or absence of molecular oxygen dramatically influence the biological effect of X-ray. As we can see here, if we use the lower LET, okay, for example, as X-ray is equal to 1, so the oxygen enhancement ratio will become the higher. But if we use the alpha particle, which is the LET equal to 100, the oxygen enhancement ratio become lower. Okay, oxygen if uh, oxygen present or elevated cell increase the radiation effectiveness for the cell killing. So if you use the high oxygen oxygen, the cells become radiosensitive. But if you lack of oxygen, uh, or we know as the hypoxic cells, result in more radio resistant cell. Okay, for the next biological factor is age. As we can see here, for the graph, in our early age, the radio sensitivity become higher. But uh, if our age become increase, the sensitivity become decrease until at certain level. Uh, at the late age, uh, the sensitivity will become a raise again. Okay, for recovery, if the dose of radiation is sufficient to kill the cell before its neck division, the phase that will occur. For example, uh, is a cancer cell. Uh, so if we we, 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 need, we need to make sure uh, the cancer cell need need, uh, need to receive the the enough radiation uh, radiation dose to the cancer tumor. But if the dose is sublethal, the cell may recover from damage. Okay, for for example. Uh, in our healthy tissue, we need to make sure um, they have enough time to recover it, uh, themselves. So we, we need to use these two uh, consequence uh, factor to make sure the cancer cell will die and then we can preserve the healthy tissue. Uh, this is uh, the, the recovery formula which is the repair and repopulation. Uh, with the function of time. Okay, for the next uh, biological factor is a chemical agent, which is we have two type of chemical agent. They have uh, radio sensitizers and radio protectors. Okay, for the radio sensitizers, agent that enhance the effect of radiation are sensitized. Example are include homo uh, hologenated pyrimidines that become incorporated in the cell DNA and effectively double effect of radiation. And the second is the vitamin, vitamin K. And then this uh, radio sensitizer must be present at the time of irradiation. Okay, for the radio protectors, radio protectors agent as exist but have not found any human application. They must be given in a toxic level to the effect. So because of that, uh, the Radio protectors uh, did not use in a human body. The protectors, protective agent uh, can be was the radiation. Uh, the, the radiation. Okay, let's go to the final uh, biological factor, which is the hermosis. Hermosis is that there is a growing body of the radiology evidence that suggests that a little bit of radiation is good for you. The study have shown the animal life longer lives when the they receive low radiation dose. The prevailing of explanation is, is that a little radiation simulates hormonal and immune response toxic and environment agent. As we can see here, the radiation the radiation dose at the certain at certain at this level have a low response because the presence of radiation hormones at, at at a certain level of Radiation dose, the radiation, uh, the response will increase directly proportional to the radiation dose. Okay, that's all for me. Thank you. Hello, everyone. My name is Joshua. I'll be sharing my part on repopulation. It is the proliferation of cell post irradiation by um, ionizing radiation. 
in my presentation, I will share three factors affecting repopulation. That is uh, time, fractionation, and dose. Um, first, I want to share what is accelerated repopulation. When tumor cell is, is radiated with um, radiation, the rate of its growing is accelerated. Um, and um, this is due to the proliferation rate uh, far exceeds that of the tumor cell loss due to radiation. Um, there are two groups of researchers that um, shows this um, accelerated repopulation. So one group say um, shows uh, the cell cycle length is decreased post radiation. For example, rhabdomyosarcoma grew three times faster after it was radiated compared to before it was radiated. Um, another group, uh, Roxwell's group, showed that um, tumor cells also grew faster because uh, they say tumor cells uh, recruit the quiescent cells, which is the non-actively dividing cells, into the cell cycle uh, to undergo mitosis. Um, yeah, and the group shows that the recruitment can be as fast as one day. All right, uh, so here is a, a diagram of picture of um, tumor. In, in the center on the left uh, picture, you see the, the, the stem cell, stem tumor, cell, uh, tumor stem cell, which is the actively proliferating and enclosed by a tumor cell that is um, uh, not, not proliferating, not dividing. And once, uh, when it, it is irradiated, then the size changes. The stem cell uh, becomes larger because uh, it recruits more of the quiescent cells, um, while the outer, outer uh, layer tumor that is not proliferating decreases because of cell loss. Um, so this increases the um, repopulation of the tumor cell. This is a graph, surviving fraction uh, graph of um, a fractionation regimen. You see that at each fractionation, there is an increase in surviving fraction due to repopulation. Okay, so the first um, factor that affects repopulation is time, um, specifically time on tumor cells. Um, there are two time, there are two defined time. One is the overall treatment time which is the time from the beginning of the treatment to the ending of the treatment. Um, interval fractionation time is the time where uh, a patient takes or, or is allowed for the patient um, to, to rest so that the normal cells can repair itself or and also that the tumor cells can redistribute themselves in the cell cycle and the, the inner part of the tumor cell can re-oxygenate re it, re it um, so to allow it to be more radiosensitive for next fractionation. Um, um, <clears throat> excuse me. Um, so a long OTT or IFT will um, make the tumor repopulate. Hence, it is said to be uh, fail, to fail in tumor control. Or short OTT or IFT is good um, because it causes cell loss and not so many repopulations. So it is successful in controlling the tumor. Um, the different OTT can be represented in the lower uh, left graph here. You see that there are two um, OTT. One is eight week, represented by A, and B is six weeks. Um, this is, as you can, TCD is the dose needed to control 50% of the tumor. As you in, as you can see, um, in A, with the eight weeks. TCD is higher because repopulation uh, happens 
um, when you take a longer time and therefore you need more you need higher dose to control the tumor down to 50 percent whereas in b this which is only six week you need less dose tcd50 to control because there is not much repopulation occurring in that regimen similar to um the graph on the left side the graph on the right side shows again um longer time means longer tcd dose um, apparently there are there are two types of um, repopulation behavior one is immediate uh, with a lag time and the other one is immediately after the treatment um, unfortunately um, there is no way for us to know which uh, tumor will behave in what way because um, tumor cells individually will be um, located in a in various stages in the cell cycle or they may even be in the quiescence um, non proliferating stage um, but generally um, short OTT is preferred um, especially for those fast proliferating uh, tumor like head, head and neck cancer So um, as for um, time, the effect of uh, time on repopulations on normal cells, um, there are two types of normal cells. One is acute responding, like uh, our skin or our mucosa, uh, the membrane layer that, that, that covers our cavity. Um, and there's late responding cells, uh, like our kidney, our spinal cord, or our lung. Um, Acute responding cells are radio sensitive, while late responding cells are more radio resistant. Um, I, I made a mistake actually here in the acute responding cells. Um, long OTT or IFT, you should say, it decreases acute injury, while short OTT IFT increases acute injury, and this is why. That's because when shorter time is used, like let's say short IFT, short IFT time is used then it limits the repair of normal cells and it also limits the uh, repopulation of the tumor cells also because acute responding cells are um, uh, radio sensitive a, a lot of its damage due to radiation is um, lethal damage which means it cannot be repaired um, if it's repaired then the, the cell will, will most probably die due to um, failure in division hmm. um, as for late responding cells um, it doesn't really the time really doesn't affect um, the late injuries this is because uh, late injuries um, onset is months or years after the treatment uh, ends um, I mean albeit that the repopulation of late responding cells is um, way slower than acute responding cells the um it is uh, compensated actually by um using small fraction size um, i'll tell you what fraction size is later the next slide um and because late responding cells are radio resistant so a lot of it is damage caused by radiation and sublethal damage which can be repaired um, and causes causes and then um, causes the cell to uh, be able to proliferate. The second factor that affects repopulation is fractionation. So fraction size does matter. On the upper left here, you see a graph by IAEA. Um, this is a graph of the same biological damage caused by total dose um, due to varying um, fraction size. Fraction size is the dose delivered um, per one time, any one time. Um, you see that the acute line, um, the damage caused by the acute, um, no, damage cost, damage done to acute responding cells um, due to the fraction size is not very different. 
um, you have a small fraction size and a large fraction size on acute respondent tissues, and the the damage variation is not very different. Uh, whereas the late responding uh, cells, small fraction size um, will require a large total dose to cause the same effect um, when you use um, large fraction size that only needs a very uh, small total dose. So, um, so this is because the key responding cells, um, it's, it's, um, it has more, it, it, it proliferates um, faster than cell being lost to radiation. Um, whereas in late responding uh, cells, the, the, the proliferation rate is it's no doubt slower. Um, so the real control of um, damage in late injury is um, to, to use small fraction size. Um, because small fraction size induce less damage, and it can it can keep up it can keep up with the slow proliferation rate of the late responding cells. So the key here is really small fraction size to accommodate the slow repopulation of the late responding cells. Here are some examples of fractionation uh, regimens. Small fraction size, um, they're used in, it, it is used in hyperfractionation and accelerated fractionation. Um, this regimen is used to counteract the AR of tumor. So um, optimal IFT is used. So you, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, so you, um, you balance the tumor cell loss as well as normal tissue repopulation. You'd, so you don't allow it to go too long um, to allow tumor to repopulate, but also not too short so that you allow the normal cells to uh, repair. Um, usually there's little to no late injuries because the regimen is usually done, uh, completed before any uh, late injury can um, uh, be seen. Um, in large fraction size, the it is used in hyperfractionation um, and it uses high dose um, or high fraction size. Um, so when this is done, it, it, um, it introduces a high possibility for patients to have late injuries in the future. Um, but this is really not a concern for a physician because uh, a lot of this hyperfractionation is used in palliative um, um, efforts. Um, so usually the repopulation of tumor will happen um, due to the long, long IFT, uh, but it is also because of long IFT that the normal tissues can repopulate, therefore causes less complications uh, during the treatment. So, um, yeah, so it's it's not so not not much of a curative uh, regimen, more of a palliative regimen. Okay, um, the third uh, factor that affects repopulation is dose. So in the perspective of repopulation, high dose uh, is usually uh, accompanied um, with a longer time. Uh, it allows for the acute responding tissue cells to repopulate. Um, this is generally used in slower um, tumor proliferation rate um, and late injuries are mostly ignored because it is for palliative care. Um, in low dose with shorter time, the acute repopulation happens because um, they repopulate really fast. Mm. And this can be used, it's ideal for a fast, fast proliferating tumor. Um, it has minimal lead injuries and it is successful in controlling the tumor. I want to take us on a sidebar to talk about this. Should mobile phones be used by radiotherapy patients? Um, there are two camps arguing, talking, debating, uh, use it or don't use it. Um, I want to talk about this because of the impending arrival of the new 5G technology that is still elusive to many of us, myself included. So here are some information that I've gathered uh, that I wanted to share with us. 
5G uses millimeter wavelength, whereas 4G uses inches to feet long wavelength. And because of this longer wavelength of 4G, it can either uh, penetrate through our body or be absorbed within our body. When and if it is absorbed in our body, 4G can cause or generate a reactive oxygen species that is a, a radical that is highly harmful to our DNA, causing DNA breakage, like single strand or double strand break. Um, whereas in 5G, the, because uh, of the shorter wavelength, it is absorbed at our skin level and the damage caused is usually tissue heating or, or uh, metabolic change of the skin tissues. Um, and both of this damage, uh, I, mean, I mean, both of this 5G and 4G damages uh, can be seen in the, can be seen in animals, humans, plants, and bacteria. Um, these results are, were actually published by um, a, a declassified dossier from the Russian government in the late uh, 1970s. This paper especially talks about, talked about the millimeter wavelength damage, um, which is what we known as 5G. Um, nonetheless, hot debate still persists on um, whether 5G should be used or should not be used. Um, both camps present plethora of papers to argue their, their, their viewpoints. Um, with or without these papers though, 5G is coming soon. Um, so really, the rallying cry for us is to hold those in position of power to have them, to hold them accountable to more testings, uh, to have uh, a more consolidated result, a voice, um, more guidelines, more safety guidelines um, before the 5G can be rolled out. Um, I mean, I don't want to dismiss that 5G is dangerous or safe to be used. I, I just think that it needs to, to be, it needs to have more testings. Um, so. So my take is that Batman is always right. Thank you.